All right, ladies and gents, let's go on to question nine. They say in the diagram, O is the center of the circle and EC is a tangent. Now, remember, guys, the, the immediately when they tell us that we've got a center O, right? Uh, the one thing that I want you guys to always remember, right? I go and look for my radii. So I know OD should be equal to OC. And that should be equal to OB. Those are my radii, right? Okay, and radii is plural for radius. All right. Uh, now, they say to us, uh, in fact, before we even get to that, so what does that help me with? Guys, uh, as soon as I've got those radii that are equal, that makes triangle ODC, okay, an isosceles triangle, so which means the base angles of an isosceles triangle should therefore be equal, right? Okay, so, uh, or you can say angles opposite uh, equal sides, right? Now they say to us, we also have DM equal to MC, right? So they are telling us now, can you see, line from center, okay, that bisects a chord should be perpendicular, okay uh, to that chord so we know that's got to be 90 degrees they say ome is a straight line so where is ome right that's a straight line usually that does give a clue uh, uh, perhaps we might need to use either exterior angles or you know um, opposite uh, uh, angles all right so in that case let's see they say O1 is equal to 2x, so there is O1 over there, okay? That's equal to 2x. Now, they say write with the reasons three angles equal to x. All right, now, uh, without making it too confusing, all right, so firstly, I want you to note, so if I've got, that's the angle at the center, it is subtended by arc, BC or chord BC, an imaginary chord there, right? Angle at center, twice angle at circumference. So can you see that uh, that chord BC would actually subtend both this angle, uh, which is angle A. So I'm going to say angle A, or rather let's say O1, is equal to two times angle A. And the reason is angle at center equals to two times angle at circumference. Okay, so that means that uh, angle 2A is actually equal to 2X. All right. I mean, uh, angle A, therefore. would be equal to x all right so that makes sense there and again we've got another angle at center equal twice angle at circumference okay so if i look at that angle at center the angle at circumference also subtended by chord bc now the angle at circumference would be this angle here so it's also subtended by the same chord. So that would be angle D. Okay. So again, O1 should be 2 times angle D, which is 2X. And so therefore, uh, right, for the same reason, angle at center equals 2 times angle at circumference okay so therefore angle d must be equal to x as well but do you see where this comes in now now i've got my radii right so another angle which is we know that od is equal to oc this these are radii okay but what do we know about our radii in that case? So OC is equal to OD, right? 
uh, they are radii. So therefore, it means that angle D must therefore be equal to angle C2, which is equal to X. Why is that? These are angles opposite equal sides. Right, so please remember, uh, you know, those radii actually help you with that. So we found this angle D equal to X. We've also found that angle equal to X, but we've also found angle A also equal to X. Right, now they say prove that O2 is equal to 90 minus X. So if we look at uh, O2, it is this angle over here. Right, very easy for us to do so because we're going to say in triangle OD, uh, OMC, right? We already know this is equal to 90, right? So we know that um, OM, okay, so OM is perpendicular to DC. Okay, but why is that? Right, we know that in this case, we've got line from center. Okay, I'm just going to write the reason beneath. So line from center in this case is a bisector chord. Okay, so if a line from center bisects a chord, it has to be perpendicular to that chord. So therefore, it means that OMC, angle OMC is 90 degrees. Right, now we go into triangle OMC, in triangle OMC, we already know that C2 is equal to X. Okay, so that means O2 plus M2. Okay, so we called it angle M, uh, OMC. In fact, we should have just rather said M2 because it is given. So M2 is equal to, so plus M2 uh, plus uh, O2. So as we said O2 plus M2 plus C2 equals to 180 and that's angles in a triangle and guys notice m2 is 90 degrees uh, c2 is equal to x so therefore o2 is 90 minus x All right i hope that you got that now they say to us so we got this to be 90 minus x okay let me just write it in a different color so this is 90 minus x right so now they say to us prove that ec is a tangent now where is ec okay so there's our ec there okay they say it is a tangent to a circle passing through the points mco uh, so that's M C O. Okay, so we imagine there to be a circle there. Right, so I want us to note, ladies and gents. So if there was a circle there at uh, uh, M C O, then what it simply means in this case is that uh, if you notice, we would kind of use the. Um, you know, uh, the 10 chord theorem. So uh, if we can prove that C3 is equal to O2, we've already found the value of O2 over there, right? So um, then we would be able to do that. But look at this, quite easy for us to do that because again, right? Uh, if we now found, this is line from center, Oh, by the way, they didn't tell us that. Uh, no, it is actually a tangent to the bigger circle. 
So what would be the size of angle C3? So we can say, right, C2 plus C3 is equal to 90 degrees. But why is that? Because we know that this is the 10 perpendicular to radius. Okay, so that means that C3, remember C2 is equal to X, so therefore C3 would be 90 minus X, right? So in that case, it means that therefore, I want you to note, C3 must be equal to O2. O2 because both of them are 90 minus X. So it means that MC or rather EC would definitely be a tangent, is a tangent to circle MCO. And why is that? Because in that case, we can apply the converse of the 10 chord theorem. Okay. Converse of the 10 chord theorem. So note, independently, guys, let me just remove all of this. We proved that C3 is actually equal to O2 because we found both of them to be equal to 90 minus uh, X. So then it does say, because the 10 chord theorem is applicable for the circle, then in that case, it must be that EC is a tangent. I hope that makes sense. Right, and then finally, they say, prove that DOCE is a cyclic quad. Okay, so we've got DOCE. So we are looking at this guy over here. Right, would it be... A cyclic quad. Now, if it is a cyclic quad, then it has to be that uh, if we applied this butterfly theorem, so uh, what if we prove that E is actually equal to X? Now, once again, ladies and gents, we just found C3. We said this is 90 minus X, right? And we know this has to be 90. They are vertically opposite angles, okay? Uh, we can use still the 10 perpendicular to uh, the chord, okay? So that means that E would be equal to X. All right, so let's conclude that, ladies and gents. So we are simply going to say for the last one, in triangle, uh, MCE, okay? We know that uh, EMC is 90, is equal to 90 degrees right so we can still use 10 perpendicular to radius okay or we can say that angles uh, on a straight line right so we can use that straight line over there uh, angles on a straight line or you can say vertically opposite angles right so now we know that C2 is 90 minus X, so that means C2 plus angle E plus angle EMC are equal to 180 degrees. That's angles in a triangle. Sum of angles in a triangle. And in this case, ladies and gents, I want you guys to note it means that angle E would therefore be equal to X, right? Now, finally, we are proving that it is a cyclic quad. So therefore, okay, angle E must therefore be equal to angle D. Both of them are equal to X, right? And so, it, which means that DOCE is a cyclic quad, 
right? So this would be a cyclic quad. But remember, why is it a cyclic quad, right? So it is a cyclic quad because angles, uh, or rather we can say the converse of angles on the same segment are equal. Okay, right, ladies and gents, I hope that you get that. All right, so this wasn't really uh, quite a bad question. Right, let's go to the very last question.